can still remember sitting in my second grade class learning that the oxygen we breathe comes from trees and plants. When I started scuba diving, I discovered that was only part of the truth. More than half of the oxygen on our planet comes from microscopic phytoplankton and marine plants in the ocean. Everything on the planet, including people, depends on the ocean for life. Every breath we take we breathe ocean. But we are destroying it. And it's happening so quickly, we risk destroying ourselves. I think that was the craziest, craziest dive I've ever made in my life. <laughs> there was one um, piece of plastic that kind of summed it up. It, it had English words on it that said, think big. And there's nothing bigger than I could think than how the heck do we work together to clean our ocean? Because this is a problem the world over. If you go to any river system, anywhere in the world, anytime it rains, pollution goes straight to the ocean. Without our ocean, we don't have a healthy planet. If we kill it with plastic, we've destroyed it, our, our world. It's really common to perceive people, culture, and history as something separate from the environment. And it, that is just not true. It's not two separate stories. It's one story of the ocean, the sea, the coast, and the people. One of the objectives in my work is to raise public awareness about the threat to coastal and submerged cultural resources. The environmental issues that are at play in the Puget Sound, the Salish Sea, the Pacific Ocean, in fact, all the world's oceans, where sustainability and human activities must learn how to work together um, to protect our natural resources and feed the world. More than three billion people rely on the protein from the sea as their main source of protein. A healthy world economy is tied to a healthy global ocean. Every fish you eat, it ultimately comes down to the phytoplankton that provided the food for the, for the fish. So it's very important. Phytoplankton are forming the base of the food web. At night, uh, the cells divide, uh, they're being eaten, the copepods come up, they eat those cells, and then uh, copepods are like tiny, tiny little shrimps, so bigger shrimps called krill uh, come and gobble those up. And then you have fish who feed on krill, uh, who you gobble them up, and then you have larger fish and shark and orcas and seals. And so you got the whole food web, basically depending on those tiny little microbes that use sunlight to, to grow. When I first started giving public presentations, it was all about the beauty and the adventure of the underwater world I love so much. But that all changed when I started documenting ocean pollution, overfishing, and the environmental destruction from climate change. I realized that the ocean doesn't need people, but people need the ocean. So I started spending more time speaking giving public presentations and sharing stories about what is happening just below the surface of the sea. It was hard for some people to hear, but kids get it right away. I say breathe, you say ocean, breathe. Ocean, ocean. I love our ocean, do you love our ocean? Yeah! Unfortunately, environmental science ocean awareness, ocean pollution is really not something that's covered in curriculum. So it's something that needs to be supplemented to bring real world topics into the classroom, into schools, into the community, and really get kids interested and aware and engaged 
in real world situations. After presenting to these students in Redmond, Washington, they implemented a school-wide challenge from the Our Ocean and You campaign. Their goal was to raise awareness about ocean pollution with a 30-day challenge to refuse single-use plastic, which is plastic you use once and throw away. Every single piece of plastic that has ever been created is still on our planet today. Plastic lasts 500 to 1,000 years. We use all sorts of things such as straws and plaster wrap every day. and We depend on it most of our lives and we never know what's going to happen. It's like after you throw away after the bin, you're like, oh, okay, it's gone. It, we won't see it again. But the true thing is, is that it's still here on this earth. Kids are 40% of our population and 100% of our future. I am so excited. Today is World Ocean Day, and I am here with sixth graders and second graders at Jackson Beach in Friday Harbor. And what we're doing is we are looking for microplastics on the beach. We are getting this generation, our country's most valuable resource, to focus on their environment and how they can make a difference. They are making the world healthier for themselves, healthier for the ocean, and all the animals in the ocean. I started to teach kids and teens how to scuba dive and explore our underwater world. It was amazing what happened. They not only fell in love with everything underwater, they also wanted to know everything about what they were seeing. They started taking responsibility and ownership to protect what they love. Sharing this passion of ocean exploration with them inspires me. It gives me so much hope. Imagine what they will do in their lives to help protect our world. Um, we are at the Edmonds Marina right now and we were just going and diving underwater and picking up trash. When I was under the ocean, um, I just learned how much people throw stuff away and it makes me feel sad because people are trashing our ocean, but it makes me feel like a new energy because I need to help the ocean more. I have seen the power of what everybody working together can do. Although we collectively have caused this problem, we can collectively solve it. And all it takes is people changing their mind by taking photographs, by showing people, by telling them, hey, this is what is down there. This is what humans do to the ocean on a daily, hourly basis. Hopefully it will get people to wake up because it will take, it's gonna take all of humanity to clean up the ocean and to look after it for the future. There are three huge threats to our ocean caused by people. Pollution, overfishing, and the effects of climate change. But people can also be the solution. Public awareness can drive policy and corporate change. Good evening, everybody. So my name is Khalil al -Abedi. I'm a 16-year-old resident of Edmonds and an avid scuba diver. I would be lying if I told you that beauty was the only thing to see underwater. Unfortunately, our ocean is being threatened by single-use plastic. I stand in front of you today, not only as a representative for scuba divers all around the community, but as a voice for the children and teenagers of our city who don't have the power to vote. As a city and a community, it is our job to preserve this wonderful gift of the ocean that we have been blessed with. I can't imagine life without it, and it isn't fair for future generations that we aren't doing everything we can to care and protect for our marine life. We can't stop at cutlery and straws. We have to continue our efforts as a city again to ban single-use plastic completely for the sake of protecting our ocean for future generations. Thank you. Our voices mattered. After our public hearing, the Edmond City Council voted unanimously to ban plastic straws and cutlery. Other cities and countries are doing the same. Yet, we need more action now. More people need to raise their voices for the ocean. Hi, my name is Sierra Vickers, and I work for Dive Extras, a manufacturer of underwater dive vehicles. 
Dive extras as an underwater manufacturer, it is so important to us to you know keep the environmental things friendly and sustainable. After seeing Annie's video about refusing one-time use plastic for 30 days, we knew that there was something we could do. In the variants of a single-use plastic bag to paper, and paper is actually less. So you can buy it in larger bulk and the Ziploc bags actually come out to be more. And so we were able to make an easy transition from plastic. Making these simple changes from one-time use plastic to sustainable materials was really exciting for us because we knew that if we made this simple change, lots of other corporations would be able to be encouraged to be able to do the same. To be able to show people how easy and inexpensive it really is to make this change because it's going to be a long-term change once you make it. And to have them think that there's a bigger problem here that we can all come up with a solution for. As an underwater photographer and filmmaker, my passion for the ocean drives everything I do. My dream is for everyone to find their passion and be ocean-minded because every breath we take connects us to the sea. The challenge is vast facing our environment, but so is our resolve. People in your community are already starting to make a positive impact. You can join this growing movement and make a meaningful change in our world today. Be the voice of the ocean. <laughs> Be the voice of our ocean. Without you, our ocean has no voice. That it was really happy because um, you were um, one of the only people who said that humans was the problem um, to um, all that bad stuff going on in the earth. And so what are we going to do as humans? We're going to try and fix it as best as we can.